Well, hello and welcome along to Silverstone, everybody, for what will be coming up, the Radical Challenge Championship and the Radical SR1 Cup, both on a combined grid over the course of today. So um, we're looking forward to what will be round 12 of the series uh, for the Radical Challenge Championship and round nine of the Radical SR1 Cup. Uh, with they saw two sprint races yesterday. We've got the pit stop race coming up today, which means we've also got uh, potentially some driver changes for at least one of the cars that is out there. We do have uh, a shared car out there, uh, but we also have success seconds to worry about. So not all of the cars necessarily are going to be stationary in the pit lane area for the same time. Pit stop duration will be, what, 45 seconds plus the time to pass through the pit lane complying with the speed limit. Uh, but in addition to that, there are extra success seconds to add to those cars that last time out in the endurance race that we had at Snetterton on the 3rd and 4th of July uh, finished inside the top five. So in other words, it's an extra 20 seconds for the winner of that race. Uh, 15 seconds if you finish second, it's 10 seconds if you finish third. And whether you were fourth or fifth, you pick up five seconds for both of those positions. So all of that to look forward to. Uh, and we'll see as to whether we get uh, any new winners. Uh, we had two sprint races yesterday, as I say, in the Radical Challenge Championship. We saw James Sweetnam come through to claim his first win of the season in race number one. Uh, Mark Richards and championship leader Matt Bell completed the top three in the Radical SR1 Cup that joined them on the grid for this weekend. They usually have separate races, but they are joined on the Grand Prix circuit. It was James Lay that claimed the win. That was his third on the bounce of the occasion uh, from Nick Zapolsky and Andy Lowe, who made his uh, sole trip to the podium so far this year. Uh, and then race two later on in the day, uh, Matt Bell claimed the win. Uh, Jerome de Sadly, his main championship rival, finished in second place, and Mark Richards completed the top three in the Radical Challenge Championship. And in the Radical SR1 Cup, it was Mackenzie Walker that claimed his debut victory of the season from Will Hunt, the championship leader, uh, or at least coming into this weekend, uh, and James Lay, his main championship rival, who finished third. But in the Radical SR1 Cup, the championship lead has been uh, flipping and flopping around over the course of the last 24 hours with what went on in both race one and race number two. You can see it's a nice warm day at Silverstone. There's a light breeze, but we do have um, some clouds. But thankfully, the weather that we had yesterday, which was fine mist and rain throughout some parts of the day, has largely and in fact entirely stayed away over the course of the day. We are using the full Grand Prix circuit configuration, but we are not using the wing building that you can see there. We are using the heritage pit. So in other words, at the old start finish line before the redevelopment of Silverstone. So in other words, turn one is Cops Corner rather than turn one, as it would be for the Grand Prix, is uh, the Hamilton straighten up towards Abbey. Um, so let's uh, wait and see as to what is uh, going to be going on. There's a, a grid there, which is not the grid for the Radicals. That is a grid for the Monopostos, I think, uh, rather than the race that will be coming up very shortly. So we'll see whether we can bring you a grid for this one. We're still awaiting for the cars to be released out onto the circuit as well very shortly. Uh, as I say, combined grid for this weekend. We've got the Radical, Radical Challenge Championship, which whilst the championship caters for different types of radicals, whether it be the SR3 or the SR8 or uh, even the new uh, SR10 and the RXC Coupe or Spider, it's, it's all uh, SR3s that we've got on the grid and the entry list for this weekend. So they are the Suzuki engined 1500cc cars so they are what topping out around about 150 miles an hour here really down the bottom of the hangar straight uh, but they are 225 brake horsepower cars uh, it's the Suzuki engine and the Radical SR1s that join them on the grid but that is a 1340 cc Suzuki engine so a, a little bit less power and not as aerodynamically efficient as the uh, as the SR3s uh, and also the uh, SR1 Cup do run on a treaded tyre, whereas the Radical Challenge Championship uh, will be running on the Hankook slick tyres. Hankook is the world tyre partner for Radical nowadays, as it has been for a period of time. Uh, our marshal's just doing a little bit of clearing up following one of the earlier support races. Uh, we mentioned them a few times yesterday. We'll mention them today as well. We cannot go motor racing without our, our fantastic volunteer marshals who give their time freely so that we can enjoy our motorsport. And, and many of the cars, as well as our bottom left hand corner of our screen is carrying the orange heart over the course of this weekend because there was uh, very sadly Robert Footer Marshall was tragically killed at Brands Hatch just a couple of weekends ago and uh, that was a, a stark reminder that motorsport is dangerous but equally uh, as a motorsport family everybody pulling together and offering enormous support for 
not just the family, but for marshals generally as well. Uh, let's guide you then through the grid for this race. Uh, Jerome de Sadlia will start from pole position, and alongside him is Mark Richards, with row two of the grid being the championship leader, Matt Bell, and for company, he has got John McLeod. The third row of the grid sees Chris Short line up alongside Chris Preen, and row four of the grid is Jason Rishover, and for company, it's James Sweetner, who claimed his first win in the championship rest yesterday. Uh, the next row of the grid, which is row number five, is Stephen Lake alongside Peter Taylor, with row six being Dean Warriner and Elliot Goodman, the first of the Goodman family that we've got on the grid. Uh, on to row number seven, it is Jacques Zolonka that sits alongside the card that is shared by Martin Plowen and Mike Chen. I would imagine it would be Mark Chen that will probably start this race. We'll pick up on the driver's crash helmet, hopefully, and that will tell me who's starting. And row eight of the grid is Rod Goodman, who is the father of Elliot, who's further up the grid, alongside car number 20, returning to the championship, which is Wesley Fongini. Uh, the ninth row of the grid sees uh, Guillaume Grouchet line up alongside Andrew Greenland. And row 10 of the grid, which is the last row of the grid for the Radical Challenge Championship, is car number 60, which is Andrew Gord. Uh, then there will actually be a gap before we see the pole sitter for the Radical SR1 Cup. That will be James Lay, who's got Mackenzie Walker for company. Row 2 for the Radicals will be Will Hunt and Daryl De Leon. Not quite as it is on the graphic, but that's the way they will line up. Uh, row 3 for the Radicals will be Andy Lowe who will line up alongside Sven Thompson, who is going to be the next of the cars that you'll see there at the wheel of the number 16 car. With the next row of the grid, row 15 overall, this will be Alex Spooner and Ben Stone. Uh, the next row of the grid will be Alex McFadden, who will be lining up alongside Mark Williams. And in the final three positions on the grid will be James Hadley, Paul Atherton and Drew Stern, who will line up towards the tail end of the field. So that's the way they will line up. The cars are already out on their green flag lap in reality, so they'll be getting themselves into neat two-by-two two order before too much longer. Uh, and as for the pit stop window and the success seconds, the car that starts on pole, Jerome de Sadlia, an extra five seconds in the pit lane. The car that lines up alongside him, the number 52 car of Mark Richards, no additional time penalty to worry about. Row two of the grid, Matt Bell, the number 44 car, that's the black car with the yellow flashes to its headlamp area. That has an extra 20 seconds to spend in the pit lane because Matt Bell won the race at Snetterton, the pit stop race. John McLeod, who lines up alongside him in largely a black and day glow green car, has an extra 10 seconds. Row through the grid, number 11, Chris Short, nothing to worry about, but alongside him, Chris Preen, an extra 15 seconds. And the only other car on the grid we need to worry about is the grey and day glow car, just coming towards the cameras now. Peter Tyler, who has an extra five seconds to spend in the pit lane. Now, this particular race is a 45-minute race which means uh, if I've done the research correctly remember it's a 45 second stop plus the time to pass through the pits at the regulatory speed limit but the pit window doesn't open until there are 27 minutes remaining in the race and it's a 10 minute window in reality so 45 minute race once we get to 27 minutes remaining that's when the pit window will open uh, and then uh, it will remain open for 10 minutes until there are 17 minutes to go and then everybody during that period of time needs to have pitted needs to have remained stationary for that requisite amount of time plus any success seconds or in the case of Mike Chen and uh, Martin Plowman that's the only two driver car in the field the number 91 car will also include uh, a change of driver uh, if uh, they are both sharing the car which was scheduled to be the case uh, as I say I've not been officially notified as to which one of the two drivers is starting that car but if we might be able to get a, a close in of the number 91 car then I might be able to pick out as to who the starting driver is of that one because I know what Martin Plowman's crash helmet looks like so we'll have to wait and see as to whether we can do it the 91 car is um, yeah uh, largely a white car uh, and it's going to be about 14th position on the grid so let's just have a, a quick look. Cars coming towards me now and try to pick out on the number 91 car and see who it might be. And no, couldn't quite see from that angle, so we'll have to see whether we might be able to pick it out. So we'll get the race underway very, very shortly. The safety car will be extinguishing its lights, I would have thought, any second now. Yep, there, out go the lights. Final bit of weaving from side to side to be done to try and build that last little bit of temperature into the control Hankook tyres that they all run. The drivers will be on and off the brakes as well because jumping on the brakes helps to build the core temperature in the tyre because that uh, hot brake disc radiates out into the wheel rim and then uh, penetrates the carcass of the tyre and allows the tyre pressures to come up as well so they'll be on and off the brakes as well uh, the Radical SR1 challenge will get going it'll be about 20 seconds later that the next batch of cars get going but we'll try and pick up on what's going on that is Martin Plowman that's starting the race so thank you very much for that that will be Martin Plowman that starts behind the wheel of that car handing over to Mike Chen 
for later on. So cars are ready to go, and then we will get what will be round 12 of the Radical Challenge Championship underway, but round nine of the Radical SR1 Cup, because we say they usually race separately. The formats for both are different, but they are combined this weekend on the 3.66-mile Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. We're about to go Radical Racing for the sole time today. Lights go out, and it looks as though Jerome de Sadly was a little bit slower away there, maybe trying to box in his main championship rival, Matt Bell, but they head up towards Cops Corner for the start of this 45-minute race. Jerome de Sadly leads the way everybody safely for the radical challenge championship at least safely through the first corner but Mark Richards is I think going to take up the lead of the race here is he knows side by side with Jerome de Sally who is hugely key not to give up the lead so I think he's just going to hang on to it the radical SR1s get going and it's James Lay that is going to lead there's a spin further back for what will be the car of Andy Lowe gets it pointing in the right direction no harm done but he's tumbled to the tail end of the field I'm afraid now, Jerome de Sadly at leading. The black car is Mark Richards in second place. The black car, but with the yellow flashes, is the championship leader, Matt Bell. He's there in third. Jason Rishover trying to sneak up the inside of the number 14 car of John McLeod. But John McLeod sweeps across the nose of the man who finished third in this championship last year. Jason Rishover, for the moment, is just going to have to see whether he can unlock the door elsewhere around the lap. There's a lock break further back as well, which I think might be Chris Short, who was, I think, going to get overtaken there by Chris Preen, potentially. The SR1 Cups are almost three wide, heading up towards Stowe Corner there. Oh, all got rather close. Fraser McFadden comes out on top, uh, but there's a further spin, I'm afraid. And that, I think, is number 40 car of James Hadley that's had the spin. So the leader of the SR1 Cup, here he comes now, is James Lay. The leader of the race overall is Jerome de Sadia, but you can see there, two and three wide coming into the braking area for Village. That's all rather tight, yet yeah, three wide, yet yeah, pushed out a little bit wide. There was Peter Tyler. So they're really getting their elbows out nice and early on in this one. There goes the number 93 car. That was Alex Spooner having his own little squabble. But up towards Brooklands for the first time comes our overall race leader, Jerome de Sadlia, leading the race. The rest of the field all streaming their way along the Wellington Strait. Jason Rishover still bottled up behind John McLeod for the moment. Now Rishover started this race in seventh position. He's up to fifth already, so it's not been a bad start for Jason Rishover. Over the start finish line I've come. That's lap number one chalked into the book. You can see the heat haze, the warm ambient conditions that we've got here. Slight breeze, maybe just slowing the cars a little bit with either a headwind or a tailwind elsewhere. Mark Richards with a bit of a wobbly tail end of the car there, mid-corner, a little bit of oversteer, had to correct it, which just forced him a little bit wide on the exit of Cops Corner. But the leading five have really broken away, haven't they, from the car that sits there in sixth position, which is the number nine car in the hands of Chris Preen rest of the field all filing their way through. Here comes the lead squabble for the Radical SR1 Cup at the end of the first lap. And that's number 27, Mackenzie Walker, race winner in the second of the two races yesterday, putting the race one winner under pressure in the SR1 Cup, which is James Lay. So absolutely together. Who's there in third place? That's Will Hunt, who is also right at the sharp end of the championship, Will, and has been for a good number of years in the SR1 Cup. Third last year, well, he's third in this race as well, isn't he? He was fourth the year before, he was third in 2018 as well, Will Hunt. Dean Warren looking to try and draw himself alongside Martin Plowman, but Plowey having none of it, bounces over the kerbs, the British GT racer, racing for his own team, Paddock Motorsport, in the British GT Championship at the wheel of a Bentley Continental. But Martin is a driver who has had great success in the European Le Mans series has actually raced in the Indy 500 in the past as Martin Plowman. He's further down through the order today in a car which, having spoken to him over the course of the weekend, is unfamiliar to him. And again, it's that mindset of getting used to a car which has enormous amounts of downforce again because he's been racing GT cars which aren't quite as aerodynamically efficient as these radicals. SR1 Cup still together as they stream their way over what is the Grand Prix start finish line. So Hamilton straight and up towards the sweeping corner at Abbey. Alex Spooner still sticking his elbows out to try and keep at bay the aspirations of the car that sits behind. And that looks like it's Ben Stone that's behind him. Yeah, the number four car in the hands of Ben sitting behind him. And they'll be fighting for something like sixth and seventh, I think, in the SR1 Cup in the early stages. Another lap completed. Order at the front still remains the same. The number 52 car of Mark Richards ran a little bit wide at Cops Corner last time. Keeps within the confines of the circuit this time as he looks to try and close in on the race leader. Whilst he's 
looking to try and close in on the race leader. One thing for sure, he is pulling away from the championship leading car, that black car with the yellow flashes to the headlamps in the hands of Matt Bell, that sits there in third position. Not sure what Matt can do about it at this stage. And for Matt Bell, he really needs to be making a bit of progress in this race because that car that's there in third place has got to stop for an extra 20 seconds come the pit window. So he's going to be stopping for longer than anybody else. So that is, at the moment, going to drop him, of course, further down through the order. But the pit window will not be opened for another 13 minutes yet. For the SR1s, Mackenzie Walker is dropping away and is in danger of losing second in the SR1 Cup. Yeah, Will Hunt, decisive move, sneaks his way through at Maggots and up towards Beckett's. So that's the number 21 car in the hands of Will Hunt, who was leading the championship standings in the SR1 Cup coming into this weekend. Lost the lead of the championship with a retirement in yesterday's race and is now looking to see what he might be able to do. Main championship rival, though, is still ahead of him. And towards the braking area for the Vale. That's the number 20 car working its way through the Vale. That's Wesley Fongini. Say, it's been a sporadic radical racer over the course of the last few years in the UK Championships. He is sitting a little further down through the order currently, in something like 16th position. There's the Martini delivery car, that's Andrew Greenland, who is very much on his own at the moment. Andrew Greenland is running in 18th position. And I think somewhere, potentially, we might have lost our race winner from yesterday. I think into the pit lane James Sweetenham has gone which would be an enormous shame for the driver who claimed his first victory in the championship yesterday in what were changeable conditions in that race and one that yeah you had to gamble on setup not the case today it's obviously going to be dry and are we going to get the overlap here as Wesley Fongini is about to be passed I think by Andrew Gord there I think he's gone through our race leader pulling away all of the time now did he go through no Andrew Gord did not quite make it stick actually driver who we've seen racing in the GT Cup Championship in things like Marcos Mantis cars over the past. Jerome de Sadlia continuing on his merry way. New fastest lap of the race, as you just saw, two minutes 5.140. Just to give you an indication as to the kinds of speeds that the cars are doing as they come over the start finish line, they are doing something like about 123 miles per hour. Uh, the fastest speeds that they achieve is at the bottom of the hangar straight, whereas they are pushing into a headwind, but they're around about 133 miles an hour. And there is, yeah, I thought he'd come in. That looks like that is retirement, I'm afraid, for James Sweetenham. Win yesterday for him in the first of the three races that we've had over the course of this weekend for the Radicals. Two sprint races and this pit stop race, but sadly a retirement for him. And very early on into this 45-minute race, Wesley Fongini still hanging on to 15th position. Andrew Gore, despite having thrown a couple of things at it, hasn't quite been able to sneak the place away. Hordes of cars heading over the Grand Prix start finish line. There's the number 19 car of Dean Warrener, but he is trying to get himself up onto turns with the car ahead, which is going to be the number six car of Stephen Lake, I think, who's at the front of this queue. Yeah, Stephen Lake at the front of the queue, then Dean Warrener, then Martin Plowman, followed by the number 80 car, which is Peter Tyler. And of all of those, Peter Tyler is the only car in that little batch that has additional time penalties to worry about because he finished in the top five last time out, so he has got himself an extra five seconds to spend in the pit lane from the pit stop window, and that is now just under ten minutes away from opening. So this is lap number four that is about to be completed. The lead advantage growing again here as Jerome de Sadlia heads over the start-finish line and pops in another new fastest lap of the race. Two minutes, 5.036 from Jerome de Sadlia, who more recently has been completing in Barja rallies where he finished on the podium and is scheduled to take place in the Dakar rally, is uh, Jerome de Sadlia, very much from a racing family as well. Seen him racing the NASCAR Wheel in Euro Series. Big, big, big mistake there from Mark Richards, who the tail end of the car really broke away from him there. He had to really get off the gas and slow the car down. And thankfully, he'd got enough of daylight between himself and Matt Bell so as to not lose position there. There we saw that fastest lap for the Sadlier come back up, pushing and pushing and pushing. But at the moment, a 2 minute 5.0 is still about 1.3 seconds away from the fastest lap that we've seen all weekend from the Radicals. It does go the way of Jerome de Sadia, but it was a 2 minute 3.7 in the second of the two races yesterday. 
Matt Bell almost washing out a little bit wide, coming out of the veil and on towards Club Corner. Up towards the flat-out Abbey. Must be a staggering corner in these cars as they pitch the car in towards the right-hander. As must Beckett's be with the aerodynamics of these radicals. The radical SR3. And particularly in the later variants with the SRX variants that we've got. Improved aerodynamics and through the Maggots and Beckett's complex just must be breathtaking the performance of the car. Dean Warrener trying to sneak his way through and ahead of Martin Plowman. I think he's got the inside line. Plowman's going to stick it around the outside as he to try and hang on to the place but loses out. And now he's coming under pressure from the grey and the Dayglow car of Peter Tyler. So good little squabbles heading on to the bottom of the Bentley straight. We're at the top of the Bentley straight just seeing Elliot Goodman go through. And now here comes that little fight that we've got, which is Stephen Lake, followed by Gary... Uh, sorry, by Dean Warren, I should say. And then Martin Plowman under pressure from Peter Tyler, who is at the wheel of his slightly newer Radical. Whereas for Martin Plowman, it's the original SR3. Told by the, certainly the front and the rear lights on the cars, at least. But also some of the dive planes are very slightly different on them as well. So through Cops Corner, pretty much flat out. They will head round through Cops Corner. Martin Plowman runs just that little bit wide. There's something flapping underneath the car as well. You can see underneath the car there's a bit of under tray or something just bouncing up and down on the number 91 car. He sits there in 10th place under pressure. Now, if that is cause for concern for driver, he'd bring it into the pit lane. If it's cause for concern for the scrutineers, they might show him the meatball flag, the black and orange flag, but it was just something that was flapping underneath the car, you could see there. Six and a half minutes until the pit window opens. Back to the SR1 Cup, which Will Hunt has now taken up the lead from. It was on the previous lap that Will Hunt got through and ahead of James Lay, who's now dropped into second place. James Lay coming under attack from the car of Mackenzie Walker. So a great fight going on in the SR1 Cup. We saw some good racing yesterday in the SR1 Cup, where I think was it one single lap? We saw three or four place changes over the course of one single lap. And James Lay, who is dropping down through the order, was involved in that as well. Side by side, Peter Tyler looking to try and unlock the door. He's got the inside line, his head up towards Abbey. Can Plowey hang on to the place? He's going to sweep his way around the outside, but no, Peter Tyler goes through, takes the position away. And now Martin Plowman will have to watch his mirrors to try and keep Jack Jalonka from working his way through as well. At the wheel of the number 88 car. Martin Plowman, is he going to have another nibble heading up towards the loop? No, sits behind Peter Tyler, does a sensible thing for the moment, just has to accept the fact that he's lost the position. Now, with Will Hunt having taken up the lead of the Radical SR1 Cup, James Lay's attention have been turned to more towards defence now, and defending from the number 27 car of Mackenzie Walker, former Lotus Cup UK racer. Mackenzie, fresh from his debut win yesterday in the championship, he's going to squeeze his way through into second place here. Now, that's good news for Mackenzie Walker, because he was getting delayed by James Lay and it was allowing Will Hunt just to pull ever more up the road in the lead. About five minutes to go before the pit window opens. So there's then, what, a ten-minute period where the cars come into the pits. And if anything, I think Mark Richards in second place is getting caught by Matt Bell. Last time through, the car in third position, the black car, but with the yellow flashes to the front of it, was about a tenth of a second quicker. Over the course of this lap so far, he's almost a tenth of a second quicker through the first sector. Jorinda sadly just keeps getting quicker all the time again you saw there another fastest lap of the race for the race leader two minutes 4.883 seconds SR1 Cup James Lay is resigned to third for the moment but still not far off the coattails of the car that lies ahead of him that being Mackenzie Walker Mackenzie has been a regular in this championship for a season or so now has Mackenzie James Lay looking to try and hang on to what was a championship lead that he took over yesterday. Still with a novice cross on the back of James Lay's car, but surely now that can be removed. Should have enough signatures on his licence because he's done what, eight races, ninth races this season alone in the SR1 Cup. So, and has finished all of them, so has got the requisite amount of signatures on his licence to be able to take off that yellow square with the black cross through it, indicating that he's a novice. 
Now, Mark Williams is also busy as well. The man from Dalkeith, the Scotsman, at the wheel of the number 18 car. He is under enormous pressure from Ben Stone, who's looking to try and get a better exit coming out of Chapel and onto the hangar straight. Sit behind the car, it's punching a hole in the air for him. He draws himself alongside, but that's the left-hand side of the circuit, which means it's the outside line. Andy Lowe is trying to join in the fun as well at the wheel of the recovering number 22 car, following his spin at the first corner. But Ben Stone can't quite make it stick. He's in that difficult position, is he? He wants to attack. He's got to defend at the same time, because any opportunity at all, and Andy Lowe is poised and ready to try and sneak the place away. And all of these cars are fighting for, what, 24th, 25th and 26th place, and that's the small mistake. Through goes Andy Lowe, and Ben Stone from looking to attack and gain a place has now lost one, I'm afraid. So that will now put Ben Stone down into 26th position. Not quite sure where that puts him in the SR1 Cup at this stage. might be something like eighth position in the SR1 Cup, and he's going to get the place back straight away, Ben Stone. So, yeah, having made uh, a mistake, what, two corners earlier, back, gaining the place he goes. Oh, and Mark Williams spins directly ahead of him. Ben Stone has to get on the brakes to avoid the rotating Scotsman, who is going to get going, but through the gravel, that's going to bring a load of gravel into the front of it, and that has now put uh, the car that had just lost places back ahead again. So, Andy Lowe gets past both. Now, second and third is definitely closing up, isn't it? There's now just 0.6 of a second between Mark Richards and Matt Bell. Two black cars, but Mark Richards' car has a silver stripe down the side. It's not easy to see, really, when you're looking at the cars front on, whereas Matt Bell's is nice and easy to spot with the yellow headlamps to it. Not that far away from the pit window opening. This is Chris Preen. Now, he is running in fifth position. Right behind him is going to be Chris Short, two Chris's running together. Now, if I were Chris Short, I'd be happy just to sit behind the red car ahead of me because he will know Chris Preen come the pit window, which is going to open very shortly indeed, has an extra 15 seconds to spend in the pits. Uh, there's a mistake, I'm afraid, for Stephen Lake, who was going really well in eighth place, but he's sort of come out of village and up towards the loop and had a small rotation, so has lost at least one place may well have dropped outside of the top 10 and for second place it's hotting up all of the time isn't it the gap was 0.6 of a second is now just down to 0.3 as these two cars in second and third place are slowing each other up it's allowing Jerome, Jerome to sadly to pull away ever more and particularly as he keeps setting fastest lap after fastest lap there you go two minutes 4.785 now for the race leader the lead advantage has grown to seven and a half seconds between Jerome de Sadlia and that is exactly what he needs because Jerome de Sadlia, this number five car here, has to stop for just five extra seconds in the pit lane. Mark Richards is now seven and a half seconds behind him, but he's off scratch, doesn't have any extra time penalties to worry about. So Jerome de Sadlia has dealt really well with the task ahead of him. He's been fortunate, you could argue, that we've not had any safety cars, but he's built the gap that he needs so that come the pit stop window, he should still, once we've all pitted, maintain the lead of the race. Weaving one way, weaving the other goes Chris Short in his, ass, uh, in his efforts to try and get ahead of Chris Preen. But for the moment, Chris is just coming up short, isn't he? He sits there in sixth position. 27 minutes to go, which means the pit window should now be open. I think the way the regulations are written is that the pit window opens at 27 minutes, but you have to drive past the start-finish line where over the pit wall will be hung out a board, pit window open. And only once you've passed the board can you then come into the pit lane and serve the penalty. So just because the clock has ticks at the window opens doesn't mean you can come in at the end of the lap. You have to complete one lap, i.e. pass the board, and then you can come in. It's the same at the tail end as well, is that when the pit window closes with 17 minutes to go, as long as you don't pass the board, you can still pit after the 17th minute. Depends on where you are at the circuit, I suppose. Now, it looks as though... We are going to have the change of position now because Chris Short got a really good run on the red car of Chris Preen as they head onto the bottom of the Wellington straight. Have to keep an eye on that. And second and third place are absolutely together as they work their way through the traffic. That was James Hadley's radical SR1 that they were trying to get past. And that briefly delayed Mark Richards and almost cost him a position. The two Chris's at it, and it does look as though we are going to have the change for position, aren't we? Eventually, Chris Short goes through ahead of the number nine car of Chris Preen. So that now puts him up a position. So 25 minutes just over of the race remaining. 
second and third place still together but not quite as close as they were we've still got Andy Lowe who is trying to hang on to that place that he took from Ben Stone a few laps ago the grey car of Ben Stone just sitting behind so that is something like 24th and 25th position but they have been swapping and swapping back the pair of them Andy Lowe was behind Ben Stone when they came over the start finish line so he's completed the overtake in the early stages of this lap So up towards Abbey they come. Did hear a squeal of tyres in the background, which suggests that somebody might have had a problem. Certainly for this pair. Where are they in terms of Radical SR1 Cup? Will Hunt's leading it. Mackenzie Walker, James Lay. Then we've got Daryl De Leon joining the championship, the, the teenager. He'll be four. Fraser McFadden fifth. Sixth, I think, in the SR1 Cup will be Sven Thompson, the man behind Nielsen Racing, who've been long-time radical customers and then this battle that we were looking at I think will be something like for seventh and eighth places in the radical SR1 Cup here is our race leader into the pit lane right so in into the pit lane they all come John McLeod is in he's got an extra 10 seconds to spend in the pit lane following his third place last time out at Snetterton so the first few cars now just starting to dive their way into the pit lane back to our squabble we've got on track this is Andrew Greenland running towards the tail end of the Radical Challenge Championship and about to be passed by the leader of the SR1 Cup which is Will Hunt now because the SR1 Cup don't do endurance races I'm not aware there are any success seconds going to be allocated to any of the SR1 Cup competitors they all just have to stop I think for the 45 seconds and they are all pouring into the pit lane at the front end of the window there goes Andy Greenland having been passed now by the leading car in the SR1 Cup we are pretty much at the halfway point of the race as well aren't we 45 minute race another 60 seconds will be there pit lane filling up with ever more cars diving in we haven't as yet seen anybody other than Matt Bell at the sharp end come in that was Matt Bell's car that I think we just saw come into the pit lane there Jerome de Sadlia stays out and he is now eight and a half seconds to the good. Elliot Goodman is in. Dean Warriner is in. Peter Tyler in the grey and the Dayglow yellow car heads into the pit lane. Interesting weekend for Dean Warriner because he's at the sharp end of the Radical SR1 Cup, but is not competing in that this weekend. He's racing for the Radical Challenge Championship, so he's sort of doing well in the Radical Challenge this weekend, but he's undoing some of the hard work he's done because he was lying third in the SR1 Cup standings coming into Silverstone. So he won't add to the tally, unfortunately, this weekend. towards the veil comes the number nine car of Chris Pree having been passed by Chris Short a few laps ago there's the lapped car of James Hadley having had a, a part spin didn't he up at Stowe Corner early on Peter Tyler into the pit lane that's a car with extra time penalties as well Peter finished inside the top five at Alton uh, at Snetterton rather last time out which means that he has got an extra time penalty to spend in the pit lane just an extra five seconds so it's not long race leader just heading up towards Brooklands and Luffield and is he going to dive for the pit lane this time through no need to if he doesn't want to Jerome de Sadly he can still afford to stay out and by the look of the way the car comes out of the corner he's staying out for a further lap Jerome de Sadly yep. pit window closes remember with 17 minutes remaining on the clock so Jerome de Sadly now on to lap number 12 and has the fastest lap of the race he hasn't bettered the two minute four point seven eight five that he posted earlier on fastest lap does carry an extra championship point they could all be important to Jerome de Sadlier because he's had a bit of misfortune over the course of this season with a couple of non-finishes and the way the championship works as well is totals from all qualifying rounds count so he needs a consistent end to the season and needs to keep his fingers crossed that others maybe have a bit of bad luck and misfortune that's Ben Stone in from the Radical SR1 Cup, I think that was. Looked like his car from the tail end. Couldn't see the number on it, but certainly the coloration certainly looked as though it was Ben Stone's car. And now we have got Mark Richards looking to try and place a lap on Stephen Lake, by the look of things, who has been into the pit lane, I think, Stephen. So Mark Richards in second place. No additional time penalty for Mark Richards, so come his pit stop being taken he would just be off scratch so it should put him I would have thought back into second place now quite 
how close he will be to race leader Jerome de Sadler is a mute point because the overall race leader does have an extra five seconds to spend in the pit lane. Into the pits also comes number 88. So that is Jak Zulonka. 20 minutes remaining. Jerome de Sadler still has yet to come into the pit lane. He leads the race. 52, Mark Richards, second has yet to come in. Third is Jason Rishover has yet to come in. The number 23 car and fourth is number 11, Chris Short has yet to come in. And all of those cars, barring the race leader, Jerome de Sadlier, none of them have additional time penalties to worry about. Feeding his way into the pit lane this time through comes Andrew Gord. So the former GT racer turned radical racer heads towards the pit lane. Are we going to see Jerome de Sadlier come in this time? He's about to put a lap on Rod Goodman. I think he's going to stay out for a further... No, into the pit lane comes the race leader. So this is an extra five seconds to spend in the pit lane for Jerome de Sadlier, but he has built up a nine-second lead, so he should still come back out of the pit lane once he's served his pit stop and the success seconds that come with it in the lead of the race. Number 39 is in as well. That's James Lake from the Radical SR1 Cup. Will Hunt, you can see in the background, the number 21 car is in, but the overall race leader comes in. So we've got both the leader from the race overall and the leader from the Radical SR1 Cup, both in the pit lane at exactly the same time. Out on track, we've got side-by-side side Chris Preen and Peter Tyler. Now, Peter has pitted, I think. Chris Preen has also been in. Chris Preen was running in a strong position in the race, but had to remain stationary for an extra 15 seconds, so that would have dropped him back down through the order. It's just going to take a lap or so before the order shuffles itself, because as you can see on the graphic, the top four cars are all in the pit lane at the moment. Jerome de Sadley, the only one of those with an additional time penalty to spend in the pit lane, success seconds as they're called. For Mark Richards, Jason Rishover and Chris Short, it's the regulatory minimum period of 45 seconds stationary for them. So I think even once the pit stops are completed, we should still see Jerome de Sadley in the lead of the race as he heads out of pit lane. The, re the rest of the cars all squeezing their way back out of the pit lane area it's still the odd stop going on as well we can see mark richard's car no, mark williams car i should say off to the right jerome de sadlier he should have come out in the lead of the race still still traffic to deal with though fraser mcfadden's car the sr1 you can see it's sliding around remember the sr1s do run a hankook treaded tire it's slick tires hankook tires for the radical challenge cars now better aero they have more power so it's not unsurprising that they are lapping the sr1s around the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. But for Jerome de Sadlier, he, at the moment, is looking good in this race. There goes Matt Bell, who is the championship leader. Now, has he come out of the pit lane ahead of Mark Richards? There's a black car behind him. Difficult to tell from that angle. Jason Rishover is also there. Let's have a quick look. So this is the number 44 car is going to be Matt Bell. Now, it's the number 11 car, Chris Short, that sits behind. And then Jason Rishover. So quite where that puts Matt Bell. I would have thought that would put him something like fourth, I think it will be. It's going to take another lap to work its way through. Graphics showing fifth, so it may well be fifth at the end of the lap. Yeah, gained three places, others around it pitted. But it's the next lap that will really count, and that will be confirmation of the order. Andy Lowe almost squeezes there for a short cart towards the kerbs, perhaps not realising that Another quicker car was fast approaching. That's number 11 Radical now under pressure from Jason Rishover, who decisively squeezes up the inside of Andy Lowe. Can't afford to lose time to the number 11 car that lies ahead for Jason Rishover. Jason having competed in Radicals for a good number of years. Spent a season no racing in prototype cars. We had a domestic championship in the UK for P3 cars. And... Jason took in a season or part season and a half with those cars, racing with a, a Formula front runner in British Formula 3 Championship, Jamie Spence, he was racing with, but he's back to familiar ground and radicals. Now, Mark Richards has hung on to second place. I thought he would. He is now seven seconds adrift of Jerome de Sadlier, our race leader, as you can see on the graphic on the left of your screens now. Third place last time through over the start finish line was Jason Rishover, but I think that was that was as he broke the beam coming out of pit lane. So it's going to be Matt Bell now who is up into third place. It's going to be Chris Short who's there in fourth position. Jason Rishover drops to fifth because, of course, as he came out of the pit lane last time through, he's not at full racing pace. 
So for number 52, Mark Richards, he is tasked with trying to close down. Seven seconds gap between himself and Jerome de Sardier, but on the basis of Jerome has been the quickest car all race so far, that's a very tall order indeed. Now the number 91 car there, that's the change of driver. So that is now Mike Chen who's taken over the number 91 car from Martin Plowman, who is done with driving duties for the day. And who is Mike Chen trying to keep at bay at this stage? It looks as though the car he's trying to keep at bay is not that far behind him at this stage as they work their way through Maggots and Beckett's. It's Jak Jelonka that is sitting right behind him. Chris Preen and Peter Tyler at the wheel of the Radical SR3s carving their way through some of the SR1 traffic again. Mike Chen still under pressure from Jack Jelonka at the wheel of the Valor Racing prepared number 88 machine as they fight over what will be the final two places inside the top 10. Actually, that's ninth and 10th place. Whereas for Peter Tyler here, he's running in 8th place at the wheel of number 80 car, having graduated from the Radical SR1 Cup a season ago. And he's looking to try and see if he can get himself right up onto terms with Chris Preen. It's worth mentioning as well, it's not just two championships, there's also championships within championships. So we have things like the Fangio Trophy, which is for drivers uh, that maybe aren't in the first flush of youth, uh, for which I'm eligible for those, I think, nowadays. That's being led by uh, Jason Rishover in the Radical Challenge at the moment, from Peter Tyler, who's second of the um, Fangio Trophy cars. It, it varies year on year on year as to whether you're eligible for it, because I think they take the average age of the season entries. So some years it might be if you're over 40, you're eligible. Some other years it might be if you're over 45, you're eligible. It always used to vary from season to season. Uh, and we also have the Fangio Trophy in the Radical SR1 Cup, where we also have the Rookie Trophy as well. And we have the Teams Trophy as well for shared cars. So there's various championships within championships in the Radical Challenge. With things like the Club Enduro and club sprint masters challenge but for Jerome de Sadlia he is looking good here having at the moment built up an 8.2 second lead Jerome de Sadlia and would desperately like to try and claim a win if he can he has had wins so far this season but that was a long time ago that was the 24th of April was the last win for Jerome de Sadlia at Snetterton squeezes his way through and past the next little bit of traffic that he needs to deal with I think that was Wesley Fongini, who he was able to carve his way through and pass, and that will put Fongini, who's in 15th position, off the lead lap now. As we say, Jerome de Sadlia, with those two wins, has had a bit of bad luck along the way. He non-finished in the first of the three races at Brands Hatch. He repeated that the next meeting as well at Snetterton, where he non-finished in the first of the three races. But other than that, it's been two wins. It's been, what, four second places. Uh, five if we count the one that he took yesterday he's had a sixth in there as well which was both yesterday he claimed that but when all rounds count you can't afford non-finishes and I'm afraid poor old Jerome with a bit of bad luck has had two of those so far this season whereas his main championship rival Matt Bell who's running third on the road his worst finish so far this year has been I think fourth position he's had seven wins a third and a fourth, I think, so far. So he scored well in every single round. And that's what you need if you want to try and build up a championship. Uh, back to the SR1 Cup, because we've not picked up on that. Will Hunt, number 21, was leading that before the pit window and still continues to lead it at the moment at the wheel of number 21 car. Mackenzie Walker's not that far behind him, actually, as they turn their way in towards Maggots and Beckett's. There you can see the first two in the Radical SR1 Cup. But if you look in the background of the shop, you'll see the white car with its day-glow orange flashes. That's the car that's third in the Radical SR1 Cup, and that is going to be James Lay's car. So there come Will Hunt, white and blue, black and red for Mackenzie Walker. And then there is the white and Daglo green car in the background of the shot as well. So that's the top three in the Radical SR1 Cup, running in 16th, 17th and 18th positions overall at this stage. And for James Lay, he's going to be outscored by his main championship rival, Will Hunt. So James took over the championship lead yesterday, but it's going to have diminished again over the course of the last couple of races because whilst Will Hunt retired in yesterday's race he outscored James Lay in the second of yesterday's races and at the moment is poised to outscore him again in this one so it's going to make the championship very tight indeed as these cars will head towards Donington Park 
for their next round on the 18th of September in the case of the SR1 Cup. They're all done and dusted in a single day, whereas for the Radical Challenge cars, they are also at that same race meeting, but they will race over the course of both the Saturday and the Sunday, the 18th and the 19th of September. And then their final races for the SR1 Cup will come at Brands Hatch in early November. Final races subject to any travel restrictions that might be in place for the Radical Challenge Championship is scheduled to be at Spa-Francorchamps on the 16th and 17th of October. Ten minutes remaining, over the start-finish line comes our race leader. That's now 16 laps that have been completed. Onto lap number 17 he goes. Still continually increasing the gap between himself and Mark Richards. The number 52 car is now the best part of 11 and three quarters seconds behind the race leader, Jerome de Sadlier, who looks ever more on course for win number three of the season. But he's going to have to keep pushing as hard as he can still. Still 10 minutes to go, still traffic to deal with. Anything can happen. Jerome de Sadlier has not put a foot wrong so far in this race, but he will also be conscious of the bad luck that he has had on two separate occasions. There is Mark Richards. So it's the whole length of the hangar straight, really, first to second place. Mark Richards is equally comfortable in second position, the number 52 car. He's got traffic, Wesley Fongini, to deal with, but he's 17 seconds ahead of the third place car, Matt Bell. So the number 52 car can just afford to bide his time to try and work his way through and past the traffic. Now that's Elliot Goodman also dealing with Andrew Greenland's car. Where's Elliot Goodman in the race? He is running in sixth position at the moment, so the number 28 car of Elliot Goodman running in sixth place. A driver that finished fourth in the championship standings last year, which was an improvement from where he'd been on the previous two years, where he was in fifth in the championship standings. Elliot comes into this weekend and is lying eighth in the championship. Again, he hasn't done every single round, though, Elliot, because I don't think we saw him at the second visit to Snetterton, either the previous race weekend to this one. Now, this is Jason Rishover. He'll be working his way past Fraser McFadden's Radical SR1, so that's to put a lap on it. Rishover is running fourth position at the moment, but he's the leading driver that's eligible for the Fangio Trophy in the Radical Challenge Championship. Whereas Fraser McFadden is running down in 19th position, and that puts him, I think that's fourth of the SR1 Cup cars, actually. So towards the sharp end of the SR1 Cup. Yeah, so there goes the leaders of the SR1 Cup up towards what is Brooklands. Then we will get Jason Rishover coming through, and there is Fraser McFadden. Yeah, so he's fourth of the SR1 Cup cars, but is a fair way adrift of the car that's up the road from him, actually. Something like eight, nine seconds away from potentially getting himself on the podium for the SR1 Cup, and with only seven and three-quarter minutes to do it, he's very much reliant on bad luck for those ahead. So Jerome de Sadlier, this is lap number 18 that he's heading up towards Stowe corner at now. So through the right-hander at Stowe, that little kink just left on the exit of the corner that brings you down in towards the Vale. Stowe, a really, really rewarding corner if you get it right. You can hook the car up almost on the kerb on the inside and the car seems to almost rotate a little bit more as you get that front right-hand wheel up onto the kerb at Stowe. You need to be careful that you don't run wide on the exit of it though. And then downhill into the braking area for the Vale. He's already gone over the Grand Prix start finish line. Comfortably in the lead of the race. 15 seconds now is the lead advantage. Mike Chen still under pressure. He can't shake away Jakob Jelonka, can he? So that is for ninth and tenth position. They've been pretty much rooted together for the last few laps, haven't they? Onto the hangar straight comes Chris Preen, the number nine car running in seventh position, the number 80 car of Peter Tyler in eighth place, so they're only separated by a very small amount of time, what, 1.6 seconds as they came over the start-finish line was the gap between the pair of them. So Peter Tyler will keep pushing. But the number nine car of Chris Preen, who was stationary for an additional 10 seconds relative to Peter Tyler. There's still traffic to deal with as well. Watching his mirrors, Andrew Gord signals to Peter Tyler that he's seen him coming, allows him to go through. Stephen Lake also working his way through the traffic. That was Drew Stern's car, I think, his Radical SR1 that he was placing a lap on. Stephen Lake lies sixth. And that, I'm afraid, is the second spin for James Hadley. And that, 
fingers crossed he can get that car out of harm's way because the tail end of the car is not far off the racetrack the front of it is not far off going into the gravel and the middle section of it is on the kerb so not good let's hope that James Hadley can get the car fired up and get it back into the race that'll be covered by localized yellows for the moment so five and a half minutes of the race remain we're watching Dean Warren who is running in 13th position currently at the wheel of his SR3 more traffic to deal with as for James Hadley's car well let's hope that it's out of the way that James Hadley's car great work done by the marshals having to put themselves in the line of fire just to give James Hadley a little bit of a push out of the gravel but hopefully as long as there's no issues with heat soak he should be able to get the engine fired up again and continue in the race with remaining five minutes and number 52 Mark Richards still running in second position now there's James Hadley that's good news that is very good news great work as ever by the marshals to whom we are forever indebted and I think that might have been Beckett's or maybe into Maggots where he lost the tail end of the car but good thing is James Hadley is back in the race so once the marshals are back behind the barriers which I'm sure they are there'll be no yellow flags required anymore Wherever you look, there are little fights going on, and most of it is back marker Lapry now, as the SR3 in the hands of Mike Chen has to deal with one of the SR1s, which sees incoming Sven Thompson, moves neatly out of the way. Sven, a busy man, really, preparing lots of racing cars for not just radical racing, but some of the European series now as well, and prototype racing. Stephen Lake having to work his way through the traffic to try and keep Dean Warrener at bay. Now, this will be full position. This is the 12th and 13th position. The grey and the light green car of Radical SR1 Championship from Runner, but running in the Challenge Series for this weekend in a more powerful SR3 car, looking to try and hoist himself inside the top 12 if he can. And for Wesley Fongini, at the wheel of the number 20 car he's still watching his mirrors and making sure he stays out of harm's way whilst quicker cars lap him including the car that's third in the race now number 44 Matt Bell has just gone through Matt Bell is 12 and a half seconds down the road from Mark Richards but Mark Richards pace I'm not sure whether the last lap the car did in second place involved traffic but Mark Richards was two seconds slower than Matt Bell that time through so the number 44 car is coming he is, however, 12 and a half seconds down the road, and there's only three minutes to go, so unless it's a problem that's slowing Mark Richards' pace, the rate of close for Matt Bell is not going to be sufficient. Jerome de Sadly leads by a very healthy almost 18 seconds now. Stephen Lake and Gary Warrener, or Dean Warrener rather, still continuing to fight over what is 12th and 13th positions should be out of thought going on to their penultimate lap now so I think by the time Jerome de Sadley got over the start finish line there's more than lap time left so Jerome de Sadley should be on to the penultimate lap of the race this time through Chris Preen still dealing with traffic that's Fraser McFadden's car Fraser stays well and truly out of harm's way he's focused on making sure he scoops up points for fourth overall in the SR1 Cup whereas for Chris Preen it would be seventh overall for him Will Hunt still continues to lead the SR1 Cup as well. He's just been lapped by Jason Rishover. So the number 21 car, white with its blue flashes, leads the SR1 Cup. Look to the background, though, and the black and red car of Mackenzie Walker is still not too far away, is he? He's certainly not within spitting distance, and it's really going to need a mistake from Will Hunt to lose the lead of the SR1 Cup. But Will will be conscious that the non-finish yesterday lost him the championship lead so we'll want to make sure he comes out of this weekend with as many championship points as he can and we've still got fights going on as well Mike Chen still under enormous pressure from Jakob Zalonka who what for the last 10 minutes or so has been breathing down the tailpipes of the number 91 car really since Mike Chen took over that number 91 car from Martin Plowman still traffic to deal with that is Daryl De Leon that moves out of the way Mike Chen squeezes his way through Yap Jalonka also is able to muster his way through, put a lap on the Radical SR1 as we're about to approach the final 60 seconds of the race. So our race leader will now be on to lap number 21 and certainly is, I would say, a 
until the chequered flag falls, you can never say it, but more on course than ever to scoop up what would be win number three of the season in the Radical Challenge Championship. That being Durango sadly up. So Fraser McFadden running fourth in the SR1 Cup. He's a long way adrift of the lead three in that category. The best part what, of nine seconds shy of James Lay's number 39 car. There is James Lay now. We can just see him being lapped by Elliot Goodman. But the number 39 car of James Lay is on course for a podium in his respective championship. It'll be 18th position overall, but third place of the SR1 Cup competitors. And that lap, new lap record, oh, sorry, a new fastest lap for Matt Bell. Where did he pull that one from? Two minutes, 4.777 for Matt Bell. He picks up the extra championship point now for the fastest lap. And it's still going to be way off Mark Richards come the checkered flag, but all of a sudden, Matt Bell pushing hard on that one. Uh, Jerome de Salia takes the win. So Jerome de Salia over the start, finish line to claim the win in round 12 of the Radical Challenge Championship, his third win of the season. We await the arrival of Mark Richards into sight at the winner of the number 52 car to finish in what will be second position. And for Mark Richards, that has been a solid haul of points really this weekend. He's had a couple of seconds and a third over the course of the three races. There he goes now to finish in second place. Third place is going to be Matt Bell that finishes the number 44 car in third place. I think he's still done more than enough to retain the championship lead this weekend because he's got a very sizable lead coming into it. Another solid weekend really for Matt Bell with uh, two-thirds and a win. Uh, fourth will go the way of the number 11 car of Chris Short. Fifth place should be Jason Rishover that will finish in fifth position. Here comes Jason Rishover now to finish in fifth place. And we should see the black and gold and red car of Elliot Goodman. Here comes our radical uh, SR1 Cup race winner. Uh, will Hunt is uh, the winner of that. You can see how delighted he is as he comes over the start-finish line from number 27, Mackenzie Walker. And James Lay should complete the radical SR1 Cup podium for what's been a, a great weekend of racing in this combined race that we've had for the Radical Challenge Championship. We've just seen round 12 and we've just seen round 9 for the Radical SR1 Cup. But it is Will Hunt that claims the win in the Radical SR1 Cup, pushed hard and had to work for it because he was down in third in the class for a good period of time, but picked his way through and past James Lay, picked his way through and past Mackenzie Walker and came through to claim a win, which means that that is his first win this weekend. He had a retirement in race number one. He finished second in the SR1 Cup in race number two and goes one better in race number three. Uh, so that's the SR1 Cup top three and it'll be Jerome de Savia, Mark Richards and Matt Bell that claim the top three positions in the Radical Challenge Championship. Say the Radical Challenge cars will head towards Donington Park on the 18th and 19th of September. Same format there, two sprint races and a pit stop race as well with 40 points on offer for each win in the sprint races. So 80 points in total for the two sprint races and 80 points alone for the pit stop race. So 160 points plus fastest lap plus pole positions available for them. And for the Radical SR1 Cup, it will be a back to their usual format of a double header race waiting at uh, Donington Park the same weekend as well but they get it all done and dusted in the one day they are racing in both of the races on the Saturday which is the 18th of September for those and again the point scoring is exactly the same as well so it's 40 points for a race win in each of the Radical SR1 Cup races plus the extra point for fastest lap plus the extra point for pole position let's confirm the results then as the cars head in towards the pit lane area and uh, the results see Jerome de Sadlia claim a win his third of the season from Mark Richards in second place and Matt Bell was there in third. Chris Short was in fourth position ahead of Jason Rishover and Elliot Goodman who wrap up the top six. Then it was Chris Preen who finished in seventh place. Peter Tyler was in eighth place. The pairing of Martin Plowman and, Mark, and Mike Chen who shared the car finished in ninth place and it will be uh, Jack Zalonka who completes the top ten. In eleventh position it was Dean Warriner. Twelfth uh, place goes the way of Stephen Lake with Guillaume Grachet and Wesley Fongely finishing in fourteenth and 15th position. The winner of the Radical SR1 uh, Cup finished in 16th position overall, but maximum championship points for Will Hunt. Mackenzie Walker was second in the SR1 Cup, 17th overall, and it would be James Lay who finished the podium.
for the SR1 Cup and was in 18th position overall. Fraser McFadden was there in 19th place out of Andrew Greenland in 20th position. Andrew Gord completed the top 21. 22nd place was Darren De Leon. Uh, 23rd, Sven Thompson. 24th place was where we saw the number four car of Ben Stone. 25th was Andy Lowe ahead of in 26th position, Alex Spooner. And then it was Mark Williams, Paul Atherton, James Hadley, Drew Stern and retirement early on in the race for John McLeod, who finished in 31st position. So that is it for the Radical Challenge Championship and the Radical SR1 Cup from all of us here at Silverstone. Thanks for joining us and hopefully we'll see you again very soon. Until then, goodbye.